Hey, fourth grade friends, another chapter in spring, according to Humphrey. Sorry, Rudy is not in the shot today. Rudy's under the bed sleeping. So, and I wouldn't come out for it. So it's just me reading you chapter seven in spring, according to Humphrey. Let's get started. This one is called Test Trouble. Late in the afternoon, Mrs. Brisbane said, class, it's time for us to think about family fun night. We had a meeting about it yesterday and I found out that the theme is circus night. Each class is supposed to come up with a circus themed game or activity. Tell the truth Thomas waved his hand and Mrs. Brisbane called on him. I think we should string a rope across the gym and I'll do tightrope walking, he said. Do you know how to walk a tightrope, Mrs. Br Brisbane asked. No, Thomas answered, but I'd like to try or fly in a trapeze. Not me, calm down, Cassie exclaimed. Those sound dangerous. Mrs. Brisbane nodded. They sound dangerous to me too. Let's think of other circus activities. Clowns, Rose, Rolling Rosie shouted. We can all be clowns. Other classmates agreed that her idea was great, great, great. Mrs. Brisbane nodded, but then she said, I know that would be fun, but Ms. Mack already signed her class up to do clowns. My classmates groaned. Hmm, I was disappointed too. Juggling, Small Paul said. We could teach people to juggle. Are you good at juggling, Mrs. Brisbane asked. No, Small Paul said, but I'd like to learn. Stop talking, Sophie waved her hand. My dad can juggle. He can juggle three balls really fast and never drops them. He can even juggle knives. Well, I'm not sure about knives, but I think we'd all like to see him juggling, Sophie. Let's keep on thinking, Mrs. Brisbane continued. We have some time to figure it out. I kept on thinking long after my friends had left room 26 for the day. Once Longfellow School was empty, I opened my lock that doesn't lock and hurried out of the room to visit Gigi. If I wanted to swing up to her table to see her, I'd have to get there before Aldo closed the blinds. Hello, friend, I greeted her as I slid under the door of room 12. Humphrey, she answered. I was hoping you'd come. I have some questions. I swung my way up to the table and hurried over to her cage. It was still light outside, so I could see her better than I could during the winter. I was very impressed with her shiny brown fur coat. It wasn't golden, but it was shiny, shiny, shiny. Did you hear about family fun night, she asked. We're going to be clowns. I know, I answered. My friends were disappointed. They wanted to be clowns too. Gigi shook her head. I don't think I'll make a very good clown. Of course you will, I said. Just act silly. Gigi was silent before she finally said, I'm not sure guinea pigs are silly. I wasn't sure either. Ms. Mack will help you. She always does. Gigi cheered up a little. That's right. She'll help. What's your classroom doing? I explained that we were still trying to decide, but I wanted to tell you about our signs of spring, I said. Gigi listened carefully as I told her about the specks who were now swimming. Wow, she said. They sound strange and amazing. Amazing. There was that word again. I'm worried about Og, I explained. He's so quiet. Maybe he's remembering when he was a tadpole. Maybe he had tadpole brothers and sisters that he misses, Gigi suggested. Well, I hadn't thought about that at all. She might be young, but Gigi was pretty smart. The sun was beginning to set, and I knew that Gigi was ready to go to bed. Also, Aldo would start his cleaning round soon, and the last thing I wanted was to be caught outside of my cage. You've been very helpful, I told Gigi as I slid down the table leg and raced toward the door. Thanks. Thank you, Humphrey, she answered. Come back soon. When I returned to room 26, I told Og about my visit to see Gigi. Gigi, but he was still unusually quiet. Before I opened my cage door, I glanced down at the swimming specks. Good night, specks, I said. The next day, Joey told the class, I've been reading the book that came with the tadpoles. They have breathing gills like fish, but skin will grow over them. And then, after a while, they'll grow legs. He held up a bag. These tadpoles came with food, but if they were living in a pond, they'd eat algae. 
Ew, Kelsey said. It's natural, Joey said. I don't think it's ew. It's kind of wonderful. I agree, Joey, Mrs. Brisbane said. I heard a groan from across the room. What is it, Nicole? Mrs. Brisbane asked. I want to see their legs today, Nicole complained. Nicole does not like to wait. I guess that's why I call her Not Now Nicole. But it will be fascinating to watch each stage, Mrs. Brisbane said. My teacher was almost always right, but this time I wasn't sure. When Aldo turned on the lights that night, he was strangely quiet. He didn't say, never fear, because Aldo's here, or how are you, my favorite friends? He just pushed his cart into the room and started sweeping. Once he stopped to yawn loudly. Oh, sorry, guys. I've been studying for two tests tomorrow. These are the big ones, he said, and I have a history paper due. You can do it, Aldo, I said. He laughed. Thanks for the encouragement, Humphrey. I looked over at the tadpole swimming round and round in circles until my tummy started to hurt. Aldo swept faster and faster, but he suddenly stopped when he reached Mrs. Brisbane's desk. What's this, he said as he stared at the desktop. I squeaked. Aldo picked up an envelope. It has my name on it. He had a puzzled look on his face as he opened the envelope and took out a piece of paper. He stared at it for a few seconds. Then he said, wow. What's the wow? I asked. Thank you, Mrs. Brisbane, he said. He stared at the paper some more and shook his head. Wow. After a while, he came over to her table and said, I just want you to know that Mrs. Brisbane is the nicest human on earth. I couldn't agree more, I squeaked. Aldo was smiling as he left. I was happy for him, but sorry that he'd taken the piece of paper with him. I had no idea what Mrs. Brisbane had written. Much later, after Aldo's car had left the parking lot, I took out my notebook and tried to think about circus activities for family fun night. I thought and thought, but I didn't write anything down. I was still thinking about the envelope Mrs. Brisbane had left for Aldo. Og, I asked my neighbor. Do you know anything about circuses? Actually, I was surprised when he replied with a loud, Boing! It was the first sound I'd heard coming from him in days. At least he hadn't lost his voice. I think there are funny people dressed as clowns, I said, and maybe tightrope walkers. But what else? Og dived off his rock into the water side of his tank and began to splash. Animals, I said. I think animals perform like elephants, tigers, and leopards. I stopped cold and glanced at the aquarium. Joey had told me the specks would turn into leopard frogs. Oh, I said, Og, do you remember? The specks, I mean tadpoles, will be leopard frogs? Og splashed like crazy. I raced to the far side of my cage to avoid the water. Hamsters don't like to be wet. But you'll still be the only green frog in room 26, I squeaked. The splashing didn't stop. Mrs. Brisbane had told us that Og was a green frog called Rana Clamatans. It was a fancy name for a plain old frog, I thought. Of course, I think green frogs are the nicest, I said. Just wanted to let you know. Og stopped splashing and floated in the water. At least he'd calmed down. I'm sure our friends will come up with great, great, great ideas for fun family night. Or family fun night, I said. They are unsqueakably smart. Boing, he agreed. It was the first time he'd agreed with me in a while. Since Og seemed calmer, I opened my lock that doesn't lock and scurried over to his tank. Og, do you remember being a tadpole, I asked. It was a very personal question, but I needed to know. Og didn't answer. Not a boing, not a splash. He didn't even look at me. He acted very strangely, even for him. What's wrong? I asked. I'm worried about you. I think he nodded his head a little bit. Look, I squeaked. It doesn't bother me that you were once a tadpole. It doesn't bother me at all. I crossed my toes because what I said wasn't exactly true. Like Joey said, it's kind of wonderful, I added, even though I still wasn't sure about that. I crossed my toes harder. Boing, Og replied. He didn't make another sound the whole night. In the morning, all my friends entered room 26 and ran straight to the aquarium to see if the tadpoles had grown. 
Slow down, Simon groaned when he got there. Oh, they haven't changed a bit. It's going to take a while, Joey reminded him. Simon groaned again. Oh, only one student didn't look at the tadpoles. Calm down, Cassie. She went right to her chair and stared down at the top of her table. Once class began, Mrs. Brisbane said, I know you all studied last night, so why don't we take the math test now and get it out of the way? There were groans. There always were when our teachers said the word test. Now do it, Daniel asked. Mrs. Brisbane smiled nicely and said, yes. Soon my friends were bent over their papers, scribbling away, all except for Cassie. She stared at the paper with her arms wrapped around her middle. Cassie stared and stared, but she didn't even pick up her pencil. Mrs. Brisbane noticed, and she walked to Cassie's desk. Something wrong? Cassie didn't look up. She mumbled something about her stomach hurting. Mrs. Brisbane leaned down and whispered something I couldn't hear. Cassie shook her head. I thought she might even cry. Our teacher told Cassie to go to the nurse's office where she could lie down. As soon as she left, stop talking, Sophie asked, where's she going? Mrs. Brisbane explained that Cassie didn't feel well. She never feels well when we take a test, Daniel grumbled. Then he grabbed his stomach and said, oh, my stomach. That's enough, Daniel, Mrs. Brisbane said. I'll speak to you later. Now, no more talking during the test. I hopped on my wheel and started to spin. While my friends finished the test, I thought about what Daniel had said. It wasn't a kind thing to say. But to squeak the truth, Cassie had asked to go to the nurse's office the last two times the class had took tests. I don't get to take math tests unless Mrs. Brisbane writes the problems on the board. Then I copy them into my notebook and work out the answers once school is over. I've taken spelling tests and vocabulary quizzes, but they've never made me sick. So why did tests make Cassie's tummy hurt? When the test was over and the bell rang for recess, all of my classmates raced out of room 26 except for Daniel. Mrs. Brisbane had asked him to stay. That was a very rude thing to say about Cassie, Mrs. Brisbane told him. But it's true, Daniel said. She just says her stomach hurts to get out of taking tests. You don't know that, Mrs. Brisbane said. Some people get very anxious about taking tests, and that might make her stomach hurt. But Daniel, it's none of your business. Cassie and I will discuss it in private. Okay, Daniel said. I won't say anything again. Thanks, Mrs. Brisbane replied. I expect you to keep your word. She excused him and he hurried out the door. It wasn't long before Cassie returned to room 26. Feeling better, Mrs. Brisbane asked? Cassie whispered, a little bit. Mrs. Brisbane asked her to sit down. I'm going to call your parents and suggest they take you to the doctor to make sure nothing's wrong, she said. You might be sick, but since your stomach only seems to hurt when you take a test, maybe you worry about them a lot. Cassie admitted that tests made her nervous and made her stomach feel like it was tied in knots. If that's the case, we need to work on ways to make you less worried about tests, Mrs. Brisbane said. Your grades are fine. You know the material. Why do you worry so much about it? Cassie hung her head and softly said, It's just, I don't want to disappoint my parents. I don't think you'd disappoint them if you got a few answers wrong now and then, Mrs. Brisbane said. They'd still love you, don't you think? Cassie slowly nodded. Sometimes we learn more from our mistakes than our successes, Mrs. Brisbane suggested. Well, I'd certainly learn what not to do with the blinds cord when I made a mistake. Then Mrs. Brisbane taught her a little trick. The next time you feel your stomach nodding up, take some long, slow breaths, like this. Mrs. Brisbane took a very long breath in, Held it, and then slowly let the air out. Let's try it together, she said. Yes, let's, I squeaked. Mrs. Brisbane and Cassie tried the breathing together, and I did too. Breathe in slowly, Mrs. Brisbane said. Hold, and slowly breathe out. I was amazed that I felt relaxed and calm after a couple of breaths. Does that make you feel better, Mrs. Brisbane asked. Yes, I squeaked. Cassie nodded. Why don't you stay in for afternoon recess and take the test, Mrs. Brisbane suggested. You might feel calmer if the other students aren't here. Cassie did a lot of deep breathing as she took the test. 
later on in the day. I breathed along with her just to help her feel better. I felt better too. I hope it wasn't as bad as you'd expected, Mrs. Brisbane said when Cassie turned in her test. It wasn't, Cassie said, and then she smiled. Whew. Humphrey spring things? Spring's full of flowers and all the rest, but spring can also put you to the test. And that, my friends, is the end of chapter seven. I'm going to go ahead and record chapter eight next. I hope you guys enjoyed chapter seven and are enjoying our Humphrey book. I am. I look forward to what's coming up next. I'm sorry Rudy missed out, but Rudy, like I said, is sleeping under the bed right now. Afternoon nap. So I will talk to you soon with chapter eight. We miss you guys, our fourth grade friends, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.